For more than 10 months of a full-scale war, Russian propaganda has gone through many metamorphoses, from the slogan to take Kyiv in three days to the war with NATO. This is how the Russian occupiers tried to justify their defeats by confronting the whole world. And when it became clear that the excuses did not work, they switched to intimidation. They frightened both their own and others. Russians with executions, citizens of other states with a nuclear strike. We will never bomb Kyiv. Our shrine is located in Kyiv, but in Washington there are no our shrines at all. Even in London there are no our shrines, and in Berlin as well. Nuclear blackmail didn't work. The world remained steadfast in its support for Ukraine. It continued to strengthen sanctions, limited oil prices, and began to refuse Russian gas. And then the Kremlin propaganda switched to the construction of an alternative reality. It seems like a cute Christmas video. The family is decorating the Christmas tree. The parents give their daughter a hamster. But later this hamster is put on a wheel to get at least some electricity. And soon the hamster is eaten. The moral obviously is the following. Without Russia, Europe will face darkness, cold and hunger. I would call this video apocalyptic, where everything is absolutely bad. They talk about Europe without electricity, without Russian gas. They say how Europe will live in the future. It goes from simple blackmail to this visual content. Here again, Russian propaganda aims to demoralize and weaken support from Western audiences at least. The impact of these narratives and messages is directed not at officials or representatives of a particular country, but at the citizens of a particular country themselves in order to undermine the trust of these citizens in their own authorities. In addition to the production of such horror stories, the Russian media are making fake news about Ukrainian refugees. Recently there was a story on one of the German TV channels that showed a sobbing German woman commenting that Ukrainian refugees burned her house. Of course, the purpose of such stories is to reduce tolerance for refugees, create an artificial rejection of the migration wave from Ukraine, and attempt to find someone to blame for inflation and energy problems. At the same time, the Russians do not provide any evidence or facts. However, credibility has never been a characteristic feature of Kremlin propaganda. The main thing is to evoke emotions and shock in the viewer. In this way, the viewer's critical thinking is turned off and he is able to believe in the absurdity. By the same criteria, it is easy to recognize Russian fakes. Firstly, the content should be viral, preferably as illogical as possible. It's clear that the emotional background, some kind of internal reaction of the consumer to this makes him look further. The most important thing in such content is to capture the attention of a European, an American and so on. And a target message that placed in this content can be successfully assimilated by the mind of a consumer. The civilized world is building a defense against Russian propaganda, blocking pro-Kremlin resources, be it television, news sites or social media channels. Spreading lies to the West has become more difficult, so the Kremlin has focused on the domestic consumer. Propagandists make commercials about mobilization, create heroes of the so-called special military operation, or well, an innovation of Russian propaganda, contests and festivals, everything to create the appearance of a well-fed and rich life. After the imposition of sanctions and understanding of this isolation, they have already begun to produce a lot of some kind of their own victorious content that they are doing very well and developing boosts at the financial system, the economic system and about some kind of victories in internal competitions and events. But this is essentially all that remains for Russia and for the creation of its content. Propagandists have to work off the fees, which are increasing. Since the beginning of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the financing of the Russian state media has steadily increased. The official budget has exceeded 100 billions, and while fabulous sums of money come to the account, Russian viewers will receive more and more lies. It, um, 
создание иллюзии великой державы. This is the creation of the illusion of a great power. If Russia cannot do this through real serious successes in the course of hostilities on the front line in a diplomatic breakthrough in some economic innovative things as the advanced countries of Asia and Europe and America do, then we have to create virtual reality, everything that Russia does in an attempt to create a virtual illusion of its greatness, although behind this there is only the status of a gas station. And as long as the Russians sincerely believe in this imaginary Russia and in the wise policy of the leader, one should not expect serious changes in reality. Reported by Roman Smoller, Ksenia Barvinenko, UATV News.